It's the season finale of the FIM Sidecar World Championship here at the Circuito Estoril. This is the long race, 17 laps of racing between our crews and determining a new world champion. It's Pekka Pavarinta on pole position along with the unfamiliar passenger Luca Schmidt instead of Ilse de Haas who isn't with us this weekend. This is the Estoril circuit, 4.2 kilometers in length. Lots of challenges, lots of great overtaking opportunities. Of course, the foremost of which being that fast run down to the very tight first corner. Yesterday's race was contested uh, surprisingly on the Saturday it was at one point intended to run on Sunday but due to weather conditions uh, weather forecasts and things of that nature it was last minute brought forward to Saturday and it was a slight turn in the championship in favour of the Birchels uh, on the Saturday in the sprint race they slightly outscored the number six uh, Ellis and Clement still have the championship lead. They have an 18-point advantage. They certainly have the high ground going into today's race. But it was a uh, success for the Birchels. They came home second on Saturday. And I believe we can take a look at some of the highlights from Saturday. was an equally overcast day on the Saturday at the Circuit OS de Ril. And for Emmanuel Clement, along with Todd Ellis, it was preparations as usual for their outfit. They came into this weekend with a 22-point lead in the championship, a fairly comfortable margin over the Birchels, but little room for error and certainly no room for a non-finish uh, on the Saturday. For the Birchills, the recovering Birchill brothers after their dramas mid-season at the Red Bull Ring, certainly all guns blazing, have not won a race since that Red Bull Ring performance and the unfortunate retirement from that race at the Red Bull Ring where they ended upside down. Uh, they would need victories this weekend in order to have any shot at the championship and that is still the case coming into today's race but it was Pavarinta along with Luca Schmidt on the pole position the Birchels would be lining up behind them in third place they would also be behind Ellis and Clement who were on the front row of the grid for Ben and Tom certainly uh, this would be the team with their eyes uh, their eyes would be firmly focused on the number six crew with the championship lead Ellis and Clement and of course Steinhausen Racing also up there they would be starting from fourth place. The uh, Manx outfit of Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau, the Manx Frenchman uh, in the form of Rousseau, who of course uh, is joined actually by a few of the French Championship regular outfits this weekend. You see a few of them further back in the starting field. Great to have some French teams coming further south to join us for the Estoril weekend. But going into the race, it was critical that the Birchels outscored Ellis and Clement. We went racing in what were half dry, half wet conditions, just a bit damp, certainly not slick weather uh, for our competitors on the first race of the weekend. Just 10 laps for them to try and make up some positions as well. And as for Pavarinta, Pekka Pavarinta, a former world champion, of course, a highly experienced rider. If there are any conditions that were going to net him a victory, along with his young new passenger, Luca Schmidt, it was going to be conditions such as these. As you can see, it was slick weather basically around the circuit, but you had to stay on the racing line at all times in order to not go aquaplaning off the track on those damp patches. That's a... Uh, sign telling the story for the Birchels. They were second place. Critically, they were ahead of Ellis and Clement. So they were outscoring the championship leaders. This would be the order they would finish in. And they would bring down the gap in the championship as a result to 18 points. It's 25 points for a win, of course. A uh, score that Pavarinta scored for the first time this year, along with Luca Schmidt. Sure enough, the chequered flag would wait for the number 44. It was a wet to dry masterclass from Pavarinta and Schmidt. Second place across the line, the Birchels. 
and Ellis Sinclair rounding out the podium. Frankly, the Birchalls need misfortunes this weekend for the number six crew, and that didn't happen in the sprint race. However, the Birchalls reducing the lead from 22 points to 18, with 20 points on the board for the Birchalls and 16 on the board for Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. A great result, though for Pavarinta and Schmidt. Top of the tree for them on the 44. The Birchalls in second, Ellison Clement third. Payne and Rousseau taking fourth place, keeping their hopes alive in the battle for third in the championship against Kershaw and Charlwood. The Christies rounding out the top five on the Saturday at Estoril. A chance to step up on the podium where all of the greats of modern motorcycle racing have stood another opportunity just around the corner for all of these outfits today in the longer 17 lap race healthy respect between the two championship fighting outfits just 25 points left to score the Birchalls realistically need a victory today on the Sunday in the 17 lapper to have hope of championship glory Champagne was sprayed. A great result for Pekka Pavarinta along with Luca Schmidt. They will be looking to finish their season in style, maybe trying to get 50 points on the board this weekend. However, the championship battle is the critical thing. For Ellis and Clement, they just need a good finish today. Second on the grid, a good result will do for them. Uh, per my calculations, as long as they finish ninth place or higher, they will be champions even if the Birchalls win. If the Birchalls win and Ellis and Clement finish ninth, they will be tied on points. However, on the count back, it would be five wins apiece. So that would go down to the wire for a certain championship result. The Birchalls need Ellis and Clement to finish in 10th place. And they would need to win. If uh, the Birchalls fail to win this race I don't think there are enough bikes out on circuit uh, to give them the title by any means because there are only 13 taking the start this weekend a few of our regular teams not making the trip down to the Iberian region to southern Portugal and so I don't think that uh, the Birchalls can do anything but win in this race if my commentator maths is telling me all the right things for Pavarinta and Schmidt it's an opportunity for glory from the second row of the grid for Payne and Rousseau if they can outscore uh, the Kershaw Charlwood outfit by a significant margin then maybe they could, could secure third in the championship the gap between them is uh, quite sizable 21 points so frankly it would need to be a non-score from Kershaw and Charlwood uh, for the Steinhausen racing duo of Payne and Rousseau on the 45 to net third in the championship of course Kershaw racing coming off the back of a hugely strong Oschersleben weekend earlier in the month 25 points in both races a double victory at Oschersleben However, a slightly uh, downturn of a result in terms of the first race earlier in the weekend. They're rolling on the formation lap then. Perhaps a statement of intent from Payne and Rousseau uh, to make sure they led into the first corner on the formation lap. So then the grid for this race, as always, is the same as the grid for race one. So the Bonovo action number 44 of Pavarinta and Schmidt will be your pole sitting outfit can Pavarinta secure another victory and finish on a high certainly you can often uh, gain some really useful momentum coming out of the season going into the winter break if you come out of it with a race win in the last race that's always a great feeling to end your season on Kershaw and Charlwood of course did the same thing here last year at the Circuito Estoril so then starting grid, Pavarinta and Schmidt on pole position. Ellis and Clement starting from second place. The Birchalls in third. Payne and Russo starting from fourth place. Keep an eye on the Christies and Kershaw and Charlwood on row three. You can never rule either of them out for a podium. Stroyer and Kolsch on the fourth row of the grid alongside uh, one of the French duos, the 5-2-1 competition squad of Leglise and Sakuti. Archer and Christie in ninth. Lebal and Levu 
in 10th place, Frete and Fenoy Casas in 11th, Lusion and Darris in 12th, and the British duo Cable and Richardson on the L&W Racing Triple One machine finishing up our grid for today. The F1 sidecars then, the long bikes as they are known. Of course, the domain of the long bikes is the FIM Sidecar World Championship. For the number six team, for Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement, it's about trying to secure a second consecutive FIM Sidecar World Championship. They have already achieved that exact feat in the UK. They have secured a second consecutive British Championship since the last time we brought you world title action. And they are in prime position. Again, finishing ninth or higher, even with a Birchall win, is the championship secured. If Birchalls don't win, I think they just need to score some points and that will be enough. However, you can never ease off the throttle in motor racing. You take your eye off the ball and that's when bad things happen. The officials withdraw from the circuit and the racing begins. It's a fabulous start from Todd Ellis, or is it? No, he gets swallowed up. I thought he got a good launch initially, but no. All the way down to fourth place. It's Pavarinter and Schmidt into the early lead. Then the Birchalls take second place. It looks as though Payne and Rousseau are making life hard in terms of third place for Ellis and Clement. But Ellis and Clement remain in third place on the number six machine in the early stages. So for the Birchalls, the most important thing is already happening, and that's that they've got Ellis and Clement behind them. From here, they need to try and attack Pavarinta and Schmidt, and then, frankly, they need to hope that Ellis and Clement have a poor race to have any hope of a championship here this weekend. 25 points for a win, 18 points between the number six and the number 16 in the championship. And oh, an early lockup there for Pavarinta. Old tyres, of course, in the early stages. And Pavarinta maybe showing the Birchalls that an opportunity is forthcoming. The Birchalls on the offensive. There's Ellis and Clement in third place. But what of Ben and Tom Birchall? What can they do? from second place. Make that the lead. They've gotten through into the lead of the race. Pavarinta and Schmidt then demoted to second place on the very first lap. And now it looks as though Ellis and Clement may have an opportunity to get through. Ellis and Clement do get, uh, don't quite get through, but the 44 demoted to second place. Your leaders, Ben and Tom Birchall, they are in the position that they need now they've got to see what unfolds behind them. Already building a gap, three or four bike lengths between them. And here comes Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement down the main straight. Clear pace advantage. Honda versus Yamaha power between the six and the 44. Todd Ellis famously late on the brakes. As always, he gets himself up to second place. So again, damage control there from Ellis and Clement. Second place if they can now disappear up the road from Pavarinta and Schmidt and the rest of the chasing pack, then that puts them in a fine position to secure the championship. They don't need to take the chequered flag first to win the title. Anything but, as a matter of fact. The Birchalls then coming across the line in the lead on this first lap of the race. Elisa Clement second, Pavarinta and Schmidt in third place. The Christies in fourth position, although Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau looking like they want to make it very difficult in that battle for fourth place in the back of shot. Side by side for fifth, as a matter of fact, we saw there Kershaw and Charlwood having a look to the inside of Payne and Rousseau. And Kershaw and Charlwood threw into fifth place on the number 29. They started way down the order. They started uh, on that third row in sixth place, which by their standards is a little bit down on what we'd expect, especially after a double win last time out. But what of the lead battle? Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement certainly making their attentions known, and the Birchalls know all about it. A glance back there from Tom, showing that uh, they are very aware that someone is coming to hunt them down, and that someone is the championship leading duo. The champions in waiting, you could perhaps call them, the reigning champions from 2022, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. 
Again, different power plants in these machines. It's Honda versus Yamaha. Of course, it's the Honda in the 16 rather than the number 6. My apologies. I did suggest earlier on that it's a Honda machine in Ellis and Clement, but no, no, no. They are Yamaha powered, whereas the Birchall's running the Honda, one of the standalone teams in the field. Yamaha very much with a monopoly on the uh, the choice of power. The Birchall's on the LCR Honda, both on LCRs though. LCR Honda for the Birchall's, LCR Yamaha for Ellis and Clement. So Pavarinta and Schmidt Still there in third place. The Christie's there in fourth position. Much less comfortable than anyone else in the top half dozen. Kershaw and Charlwood having moved up to fifth place. Uh, I think they want to try and stake their claim on fourth position. It was Kershaw and Charlwood that rounded out the season with a win at Estoril last year. Could they do it again today? Sixteen, running well at this stage. It is a long way, 17 laps, tyre preservation will be critical. Don't want to burn through these Avons too quickly. The Birchills looking comfortable though, it must be said. They're in control, they're in their happy place, they're in a very familiar place albeit somewhere that they haven't been for quite some time, and that is at the very front of a world championship race. They've had four wins so far this year. However, those four wins came in the first five races, and they haven't won since then, since Most. So for the Birchalls, this is about uh, reminding everyone exactly how good they can be when they're both at full fitness something they've not been for a little while getting a replay there of the start and again it did look as though it wasn't a bad getaway from Alice and Clement on the front row but maybe Mr Gear or something like that on the run down to the first corner of course that allowed the Birchall three into second place and have her into Allowing them through before the end of that first lap. And Ellis and Clement have also gotten past Pavarinta and Schmidt. That's a new combination, of course. Ilse de Haas not present this weekend, though I'm sure she is watching on as, I believe, we will also have Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes watching on. Tim Reeves, of course, still rehabilitating a leg injury sustained while cycling. Did actually run last weekend in the UK at Lydon Hill, but it was far from a successful weekend, unfortunately. They had good speed, but it was mostly mechanical issues letting them down on their F2 sidecar, uh, the duo of Reeves and Wilkes. And uh, they've elected not to compete this weekend. Tim Reeves still nursing that leg back to 100%. I'm sure they'll be back for 2024. Tim Reeves, of course, Perhaps the greatest of all time in sidecar racing. The Birchalls leading the way for the time being. The pace is quicker than anything we've seen this weekend. Very scarcely have we had a completely dry circuit this weekend. We certainly didn't have it this morning. It was something like a monsoon in warm-up uh, on Sunday morning. I think the fastest lap was a 2.06 or something of that nature versus the current 147s and we have had to compete against a lot of inclement weather so far this weekend that was part of the reason why uh, the superside sprint race on sunday morning was rescheduled to saturday afternoon just to make sure that the race could actually take place and uh, well thankfully for all of us the championship wasn't decided in that race championship being decided now and as it stands it would be the Ellis and Clement number six duo that would win the championship by 13 points, 25 for a win, 20 for second place, as the Christies had a look to the inside there that looked like they were going to get attacked by some behind a little earlier on. Now the Christies are on the back of Pavarinta and Schmidt, so that battle for third is alive and well at the moment.
top five teams last time across the line were separated by just 2.8 seconds. Payne and Rousseau 6.2 back. They don't seem to quite be gelling with the uh, the speed of the others. Everyone else under a 47.4 uh, in the top five. And then the sixth place outfit of Payne Rousseau last time by a 148.6. Whether there was a slight error for Payne and Rousseau, whether they're no nursing a slight issue not happy with the machine we're not sure the Christie's happy on the brakes though they managed to get it stopped and uh, take third position they were just over a hundredth of a second clear at the line as they ran side by side with Pavarinta and Schmidt and sure enough the Christie's get through into third position however still side by side as they head toward curve of VIP it's anything but done in this battle just yet great scrap for third place ongoing it looks as though the Hannafin racing duo have done just enough and this could be critical for them because they sit fifth in the championship just one point back uh, from the team currently in sixth place of Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau so as it stands the Christies would move themselves up into fourth in the championship at the very last opportunity Third place for Kershaw and Charlwood is all but sewn up, but fourth place just one point separating that battle, 163 for Payne and Russo, 162 for the Hannafin Racing number 34 Christie duo uh, team. And as it stands, the Christies would move themselves up to fourth in the championship race, so Sam and Tom Christie hoping to keep things going as they are right now. You see the movers and shakers on the board there briefly and the most critical positions gained so far in this race are those gained by Ben and Tom Birchall however it's still not enough as it stands they are still while they are outscoring Ellison Clamont it's not enough as it stands if the checkered flag waved now it would be 13 points the winning championship margin for Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clamont However, they need to remain mistake free. They need the team Ellis and Clement LCR Yamaha to stay good underneath them. It's lap seven of 17, so we've got a long way to go. There's that battle for third place, Kershaw and Charlwood. Waiting in the wings in fifth spot for Pavarinter and Schmidt. Another podium would be a great way to wrap up their, I believe, uh, well, one of their first weekends together. I think they did run in their native uh, Finland together, or in Pavarinter's native Finland, they have run together. And uh, certainly for Pavarinter and Schmidt, they would love another podium. But currently with the Christies standing between them and that achievement, Payne and Russo. Not only down in sixth place, but maybe about to lose that position because Stroyer and Kulsh coming up behind them, as we saw there. Again, Payne and Russo, as it stands, would lose fourth in the championship to the Christies. And that is only going to be uh, further confirmed and further extended the gap between the Christies and Payne and Russo if Stroyer and Kulsh from the Bonovo Action Machine can get through. the line come our top five then and you see there the Birchall's still firmly in control the gap is out to 0.75 of a second side by side for sixth position Payne and Russo going defensive Stroyer and Kulsch though far braver on the brakes all the way around the outside they get through into sixth place Benny Stroyer Kevin Gulsh moving up a position there then very good running from that team and, uh, started their season of course with a top five at the first race at Saxon Ring and they're currently up to sixth place maybe just maybe another top five could be on for them a long way to go and there's a big gap between themselves and fifth place seven seconds it would take uh, 
some drama up ahead, I think, for Struer and Kolsch to make any more progress, but it really seems as though Hayden and Rousseau are nursing a problem. There's uncharacteristic lack of pace from that Steinhausen Racing number, 20, uh, number 45. Third, fourth and fifth positions, still at very close quarters as they head towards the final part of the lap. Punctuated by the Parabolica Etten Senna, the final corner, the long sweeping right-hander onto that main straight and then the deep braking zone of turn one, which is the overtaking opportunity around this circuit. Ellis and Clement nowhere near close enough for a move, but frankly, they don't need a move right now. They just need to get to the flag in this second place. I don't think win number six means as much as a championship. However, they are closing. The gap has shrunk to 0.43 of a second between the leaders and Todilis and Emmanuel Clement. Of course, Ben and Tom Birchall, despite the injury disrupted nature of their season in the World Championship, they still had their greatest success uh, at the Man TT. Another pair of wins in the TT. TT sidecar races. Very much virtual territory at this point. I'm not sure who, what and when we will see someone else uh, claim a victory uh, in, that, uh, in that event. Over a world championship would have been another great crown to add to the virtual mantle. However, this year it seems like that's not on the cards in the right position they're doing everything they can as race leaders but Ellis and Clement are right where they need to be in second place meanwhile uh, we just saw there a switch for sixth and seventh place Peyton and Rousseau then have got back through into sixth position there's a good battle between the 45 and 21 outfits however uh, sixth place still not enough as long as the Christies are running third for Peyton and Rousseau to retain that fourth place in the championship Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau, who took a win, of course, much to their delight at the Red Bull Ring, their first win in the FIM Sidecar World Championship. He would have loved to retain that fourth place, but right now it seems like an outside shot. The top five are starting to amalgamate somewhat, aren't they? It was a pack of two followed by a pack of three. But now that we're on lap 10 of the race, it seems as though the Christies, who currently have the fastest lap attributed to them, it seems as though the Christies are cooking on gas at the moment. They're the only team to have gone sub 147, a 146.923 for the Hannafin Racing duo. So Sam and Tom Christie are closing in. And of course, they have every right to keep fighting. They are again unlikely to move up any further. In fact, mathematically, I don't think they can uh, beat Kershaw and Charlwood at this point. But uh, they have every right to try and fight for second place and fight for the win. But it's the last thing that either Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement, Ben Birchall or Tom Birchall would want. Um, especially Ellis and Clement, who are in the firing line right now of the surging Hannafin number 34. The last thing they want is going to wheel to wheel, to wheel with a non-championship contending outfit because, of course, again, second is more than enough. Third is more than enough, too. So maybe if Ellis and Clement do start to come under pressure from Sam and Tom Christie, they will simply let it go. Better to be third and champions than trying to defend second and ending up in strife and losing the title. It's a delicate balance in these championship deciding situations and it's incredibly tense for the rider and the passenger. And of course, you kind of end up second guessing yourself more because while the racing instinct in you says, well, I want this second place, if anything, I want that lead. Well, you also have to consider that putting a foot wrong could end up losing a championship. And that is not a decision that any competitor wants to make. Especially not when you're looking at it in the rearview mirror and realising quite the scale of error you made. 
So while Ellis and Clement are now looking racy behind the Birchills again, the question is, will they do it? Will they pull the pin and try and make the move? Certainly the Birchills have good pace. All three of these teams have wonderful pace out there on the circuit. Their fastest lap within three tenths of each other. Christie's could play spoiler here. Wonderful sounds emanating from the Estoril circuit this weekend with the high revving 600cc sidecars at play. The pleasure of being trackside last week for uh, the Lord of Lydon event and a mix of 600s and thousands out there and there is just something about that uh, that scream of the 600 as awesome as the thousands are as well. Christie's in the slipstream then of Ellis and Clement as they come across the line to begin another lap and could this be a move for second place it certainly looks like it the Christie's later on the brakes than Todd Ellis that is always a bold place to be later on the brakes than Todd Ellis but Sam Christie managed to do just that and he gets himself up into second place again third place is fine for the championship aspirations of the number six crew Coming up on some lap traffic there. I think that's Lusion and Duras on the 25. And then also uh, the 99 of Lavelle and Laveau, potentially. So a couple of the back markers being lapped here. However, they stay well out of the way, do everything right. Great move from Sam and Tom Christie. Up into second place, they have gone on lap 12 of the race. Now, Ellison Clement just need to try and manage the gap between themselves and Pavarinta and Schmidt behind. Pe Pekka Pavarinta has seen it all and done it twice in his racing career. And while he can empathise with someone hunting for a championship, I'm sure he'll take the opportunity for a podium if it's presented to him. That was how the Christies got through under braking at the first corner. Very nicely executed. Again, I don't think Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clermont are going to go out of their way to fight for these individual positions with the greater picture of the world championship at stake. They would, however, lose half of their championship lead as it stands. 16 points for them if things were to finish now. 25 for the Birchalls. That would mean just nine points in it at the end of the championship. And of course, that pendulum shifting moment in the championship at the Red Bull Ring where Tim Reeves and Mark Wilkes collided with the Birchalls at the Red Bull Ring. Left the Birchalls with a non-score left Tom Birchall with an injury that meant he couldn't compete at Assen. Both, both outfits not uh, blaming the other in that incident, but uh, it was an unfortunate collision that uh, rather put the Birchall's championship aspirations into question for really the first time because they were so quick in the first few races of the year. It felt like they were odds-on favourites. The first weekend of the season at Saxon Ring really wasn't the strongest for Ellis and Clement. A fourth and a third place finish, I believe, that weekend, if I'm not mistaken. However, they have really come on song in the summertime. And still on course at the moment to win a world championship. And I tell you what, the Christies might be on for a victory here. That would really spoil the Birchall's aspirations of a championship because the, the Christies are really closing in. It could be a sibling, sibling warfare here at the closing stages of this race because as we go on to lap 14 of the race, Sam and Tom Christie look like they have a lot of confidence in that number 34 in the Hannafin racing machine. It's 
LCR Yamaha versus LCR Honda. The Honda power plant in the 16 and the Christie's with the favoured Yamaha and it looked to the looked for the world of me like they might dive up the inside but they didn't quite do it uh, at turn three. Some more lap traffic to contend with for our front runners, the top five well clear of all the others out there on circuit at the moment. It's also still very close for sixth and seventh right now. Payne and Rousseau on the 45 in sixth place. Still set at the moment to end up losing fourth in the championship to the Christies. The Christies could end the season on the highest of highs if they keep this momentum going. Sam and Tom Christie have not taken a win so far this year. In fact, they haven't taken a second so far this year. So even as it stands, they're on for their best result of the season. However, there's that tantalizing prospect up ahead. A never clear a bullseye on the back of the 16 for the Hannafin Racing duo. Sam and Tom Christie have fallen slightly off the back of Ben and Tom Birchall on this lap. The Birchalls know that to have any shot of winning the title, they need to win the race. So I doubt they're going to give up that win easy. They are, however, also, I'm sure, very aware of the fact that Ellis and Clement are there in third place. So... Well, it's anything but futile to defend a race lead in a world championship closer. We do know that a, a world championship is likely not coming their way with Ellis and Clement still there in third place and looking like there are no signs of faltering. Again, ninth or higher is enough for Ellis and Clement this weekend in the season finale race. So they're on for a world championship right now. But what about Sam and Tom Christie? Can they produce a little bit of magic going into the final two and a half laps of this race? Through the Parabolica interior bend they go. Now downhill. This Estoril circuit a lot more undulating than it looks on television. And I don't think it's a particularly flat looking circuit. But uh, it, some of these... Uh, inclines and declines are a lot more prominent on foot and indeed at the helm or indeed on the passenger seat of a side gap seat of course being the overstatement of the century an ultimate lap of the race will begin this time then Ben and Tom Birchall could be on for their fifth win of the season which would tie them in terms of victories with Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. But for Ellis and Clement, third place is enough for victory. Here come the Christies, though. They're late on the brakes once again. And they've got it done. Sam and Tom Christie up into the lead. A first win of the season in the very last race. Could happen here for Sam and Tom Christie. Hannafin Racing Team will have their fingers firmly crossed at this juncture. And for the Birchalls, this is certainly suboptimal. Will they fight back? Can they fight back? Any hope of championship glory rests on victory for the Birchalls, as well as misfortune for the number six. But I think the Birchalls may have met their match here with the number 34. It seems as though that Hannafin Racing number 34 crew is the quickest thing out there. I mean, the Christies were really far back, weren't they? Uh, coming out of the Parabolica Ayrton Senna. Closed in, in the slipstream, and then committed to that braking. That was very impressive from Sam and Tom Christie. <laughs> Watching that shot all the way down the straight, I would have said no chance of an overtake as they came out of the last corner, but the slipstream was a powerful thing on the long straight. 
And let's see if the Birchalls can now try and use that in their favour. We go on to the final lap of the 2023 FIM Sidecar World Championship season. Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement are on for a second consecutive championship. But who's going to claim the final victory? Will it be the Birchalls? Will it be the Christies? Sam and Tom Christie again late on the brakes. Again strong through the first corner. Continue to lead the way. That is the primary overtaking opportunity around this circuit. But it's far from the only opportunity to make a move at this track. The Birchalls have not claimed a victory since Most in the FIM Sidecar World Championship. Wouldn't they love to just get another win on the board at the end of the season to prove that they've come back stronger after their setbacks earlier in the year? That would be the ideal for the Birchalls. However, I'm not sure that ideal reality is going to come to pass. The Christie's Sam and Tom looking strong on that Hannafin Racing number 34. Christie's, who lest we forget, started all the way back in fifth place. Currently on for a win. However, the Birchalls are close behind. Last couple of opportunities now through the Gancho chicane. And now heading towards the long sweeping uh, right-hander that is the Parabolica Ayrton Senna for the final time. It looks as if Sam and Tom Christie have done enough here. They just need a strong run out of the final corner. Can the Birchalls find something special on corner exit? They've got a good run, but I'm not sure it's going to be good enough. Sam and Tom Christie cross the line to win the final race of the season. The Birchalls take second in the championship and the race. But your champions once again in the 2023 FIM Sidecar World Championship, the number six, Todd Ellis and Manuel Clement, the green and red machine has done it again. Ellis and Clement are your champions. The Birchalls are runners up in the championship race, but it's the number six, the green and red machine of Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement that are your world champions. A well-deserved victory from the 34 Hannafin crew. Sam and Tom Christie claiming a race win at the last possible moment, the final race and the first win of the season for Sam and Tom Christie. But keep an eye on that number six crew. I want to see the celebrations for our champions. The number six, Todd Ellis, Emmanuel Clement. There they are. For the second time in a row, they are the FIM Sidecar World Champions. Of course, they've already done the exact same feat in Britain, where they are British champions already. The Birchalls, give them a thumbs up. Well done, guys. I'm sure Ben and Tom will come back swinging in years to come. But for now, the moment belongs to Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. It has been a great season for this outfit. They secured more victories than anyone else. Five wins, the first of which coming at Spa-Francorchamps on the support bill for the 24-hour Spa Moto event, part of the Endurance World Championship. Of course, much of our season has been run this year in parallel with the IDM motorcycle racing package, the German superbikes and their support categories. It's been the first season that uh, IDM has taken on organization and promotion responsibilities for the Sidecar World Championship, and it has been a great season with some real grandstand finishes. Think back to those great battles at Most and the Red Bull Ring on the final laps of races. Todd Ellis always seemingly involved in those last lap battles as well. We had another fabulous late move from Sam and Tom Christie, your final winners of the 2023 FIM Sidecar World Championship season. By my reckoning, it will be the number six crew champions once again, the Birchalls runners up second in the championship. Kershaw and Charlwood will be third in the championship. A move late in the season, fourth 
in the championship, going to our race winners, Sam and Tom Christie. They will have leapfrogged Harry Payne and Kevin Rousseau, who will have to make do with fifth in the title hunt this year on the Steinhausen Racing 45. see there one of the officials waving frantically we need you down this end please uh, let's see if the memo is received and uh, well what efforts from everybody the virtuals immediately going to congratulate tom virtual there shaking hands with his fellow passenger emmanuel clement the drivers saying there well done as well great to see this camaraderie at the very highest level of sidecar racing. The higher up the food chain you go, often the nastier the feeling among the competitors, and that does not ring true in the slightest in the FIM Sidecar World Championship. Everyone friendly, everyone welcoming. 30-14, Sam and Tom Christie, they will be welcoming that big trophy back to the uh, back to the garage with sheer delight i imagine that has been well earned and a long time coming for hannafin racing who have looked really strong at times this year but the situation in the world championship it is sam and tom christie who will have taken that title and they will have done so would be 14 points ultimately <laughs> Tom Virtual looks a little bit tired if you ask me <laughs> or rather sorry that's uh, that's Ben Virtual um, they are looking a little bit uh, worse for wear after that race uh, difficult conditions certainly faced by our competitors all weekend here uh, at Estoril. After 17 laps of racing, the Christies have done it. They've taken a win uh, this time out. 0.2 of a second clear of the Birchels. Ellis and Clamart take third place. Pavarinter and Schmidt after their win yesterday, ending up in fourth. Kershaw and Chalwood secure third in the championship with a fifth place finish. Payne and Rousseau end up losing fourth in the championship with a sixth overall. Ahead of Stroyer and Kulsh in what was a very close battle between them. Leglise and Stracuti, one of the first teams or the first team joining us from France. They round out the top eight in that race. Just to uh, get to the end of the top ten. Uh, Archer and Christie on the other Hannafin machine finishing ninth. And uh, Cable and Richardson rounding out the overall top ten. And it seems like sheer delight here for Ellis and Clement. <laughs> the Avon Tyres caps being presented. Uh, ben and Tom Birchall, the brothers from Mansfield, have been as impressive as ever across the various different sidecar competitions this year. However, that World Championship effort not helped by the drama and the non-point score at the Red Bull ring. Ellis and Clement have done everything right this season. And they did pretty much everything right in that race as well. It wasn't the best start, albeit from Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement. Pekka Pavarinter and Lucas Schmidt were your early race leaders. However, it wouldn't be too long before Pavarinta maybe showed some signs of struggling on the first lap of the race. Big lock up there. And sure enough, the Birchels would manage to get their way through on the run uphill towards the final sector. Ben and Tom would lead then. Ellis and Clement in third place. That would be enough for them to secure the championship but they fought their way back up to second place. And that second, for a long time, seemed secure. The battle for third place would get spicy behind them with Pavarinta and Schmidt under pressure from Sam and Tom Christie. Sam and Tom Christie looking very eager to try and make their way through something they would have finally achieved at what would prove to be the favoured overtaking spot into turn one. But Christie's up onto the podium positions. And well... 
question was, would there be enough time for the Christies to move up any further? Certainly, the top two were on their own island for a while. However, that third, fourth and fifth place train would soon join them. And for a little while, it looked like we might have a five-way dogfight. Thankfully for the collective blood pressures of everybody, that wasn't to be the case. As the Birchalls continued to manage that race, do everything they needed to do. Victory was what they needed to have any shot at the championship. But with the, with the number six crew right there behind them, there was no way of winning the championship for the Birchalls. Even when the Christies made the move for second place, the Birchalls knew that uh, rather greater misfortunes would have to take place for Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement for them to come home as champions. And Ben and Tom also knew that once the Christies were thrown into second place with the sheer level of performance they were showing, that win was anything but secure. And so it proved to be a lunge down the inside the preferred braking opportunity for Sam and Tom Christie coming up trumps once again. And sure enough, the Christies doing enough, taking the lead. And from there, that victory looked unassailable. That victory looked completely secure. The Birchalls were in the slipstream on the final lap, but it would be the Christies that took the win. Birchall's making do with second, not just in the race, but in the World Championship. Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement on the third step of the podium. They will be celebrating another World Championship. And Ben Birchall, I think, needs a cold drink. Certainly, despite missing out on this World title, the Birchalls will be looking back on their year favourably, I'm sure. Of course, they set that new lap record at the TT, a 120.645 mile an hour lap uh, at the Isle of Man TT earlier this year. 14 time TT winners, four time world champions, and both of those accolades liable to grow in stature as the years roll on. For 2024, I'm sure that the Superside FIM Sidecar World Championship will continue to hit its stride. Of course, this was just the first year under IDM, and I understand plans are afoot to make the calendar and the competition all the more exciting in 2024. If the words that I've heard from various parties in the paddock are true, I think we have a lot to be excited about in the 2024 season. Certainly, outfits that maybe had a few issues this year you know, the likes of Tim Reeves who really didn't get the season that we we always expect from him never rule him out of a world title contendership for next year and then you've got the likes of Kershaw and Charlwood as well who started their season on the back foot with a first lap non-finish at the Saxon ring but they've shown what they're worth they had an incredible weekend at Oschersleben I think that these two, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement, are going to have to work incredibly hard for that third world championship, but they're up for the fight, and they are delighted that their 2023 world title fight has gone in their favour. The Birchalls recognising the great effort from Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement, and Sam and Tom Christie to the top step for the first time this season. A great effort from them. Again, great momentum at the end of a year a great thing to show the sponsors uh returning and potentially new sponsors as well look at this we ended the season on a high we ended the season on the top step and wouldn't you want to back us for next year the trophy is being presented here then and, uh, Great to see everyone up there on the podium. The big trophy, the P1 trophies, going to Sam and Tom Christie.
And so for the final time this year, the trophies have been presented and the champagne is sprayed by our new returning world champions. Reigning champions now for a second consecutive year. Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement will be looking to make it three times world champions in 2024. Congratulations to the Birchalls, worthy runners up. And huge congratulations as well to our final winners of the season, Sam and Tom Christie. We've ended the FIM Sidecar World Championship of 2023 on a high at one of the great motorcycle racing locations in Europe at the Circuit Estoril. Thank you all so much for tuning in to watch this battle. And again, we have to congratulate all of our crews, everyone who's been a part of this season. It has been a stunning FIM Sidecar World Championship season, the first under IDM. It has been my pleasure to bring you in a majority of the action this year. And it's been great to see that once again, Ellis and Clement are world champions.